On this one, what I thought I would do is tell you my method. Maybe not the accepted method for everything, but my method for crimping wire terminals. Now, when I first got in this business about 1977, I went to work for a company and all I did for that company was fix electric furnaces for about two and a half years. Well, electric furnaces have a lot of problems with burned wires. And the connection made with the terminals was very important. And so I had a lot of burned up wires, a lot of burned up terminals. If they weren't crimped properly, they burned up. Uh, and so I went through a number of different tools to deal with these things. Now you can see these tools here. These are all ones I've used for crimping. Now this one here, it has the uh, little crimpy things there. That's probably the worst one I have. Uh, this this one here is not a whole lot better because there those are the crimping things there. And this one here, which I actually used for quite a while, this was a fairly good one, and it had the different size crimps there. And you notice it had the little the little tit things that stuck out that would uh, squish that terminal. Uh, the best one is this one here, which is one I just replaced. Uh, this is a Klein. Uh, I just lost my Klein. I've had it forever. But anyway, uh, I, did, uh, I did just uh, replace it. And it just has the one crimp. It, it's got one that says for insulated down below, but I never use that. I don't necessarily use these things the way these manufacturers uh, tell you to use them. I have my own specific way of crimping terminals because it was working just with electric furnaces. That was a big deal. If you're looking at something like that thing, that's a 14 to 16 gauge wire terminal. This one here is uh, 22 to 18. This one is 10 to 12. Now this is the one that does a lot of uh, terminal work on heavy loads. Those others are mostly for control or for fans or something like that. And don't draw a lot of power. Any point on this terminal that makes any kind of a bad connection at all when you're running 20 to 25 amps at 240 volts, this thing is going to burn up. It's just going to get hot. The hotter it gets, the, it takes the temper out of the copper, and uh, it gets worse and worse, and then, of course, it burns up. So uh, I tried to eliminate everything I could. Now, one thing I couldn't eliminate is this push-on terminal in most cases. I don't like those terminals. They're great for production, but they do make poor connections very commonly in the appliance. But, I mean, you're kind of stuck with the things for a lot of the work you do. But I meant, I wanted the crimp that I put on here. I wanted that as good as I could get it. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, here I pulled the uh, insulation off of this terminal. And if you look close, you can see that the ends of this copper piece here are wrapped up around in the circle and the joint is right there. My thought was when I started doing this I did not want a crimp on that side. I want a crimp which has got a pointy thing on it on the back side. I think that's the best way to do it and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, with this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate how I do these things. This is a 1210 uh, terminal, number 12 wire. Insert it until you can see it come out, but the insulation 
on the wire should not go into the metal because the metal goes back to right about there so that sticks out a little bit and then I take this and put the tip on the back and then crimp it a lot of pressure on that okay that doesn't make the cleanest of the bunch but it does have that indentation on the back that's what I was looking for and it's crimped very solidly very hard to pull this out now I've done a bunch of others that were already done this kind of gives you a demonstration of what this looks like without the insulation on it and with that tit on the back and it comes around to the front and this is more rounded it's not perfectly round it shouldn't it never would be but that's the best way I can come up with the to do it now here's another one that was crimped on the front now you know that's not bad but I'm not real thrilled with these ends being kind of out in the air that way uh, and the back not being penetrated I don't think this is the best way to do it, it may work fine for a lot of guys uh, but this isn't the way I want to do it and I'm just telling you the way I do it Here's another one I did using, uh, let's see, these things that just have the little oval shapes in there. Uh, it's not a bad crimp, but it's cleaner than the one with the uh, Klein uh, crimper. But I don't think it's as strong. Now, I haven't done tests to try to find out or anything like that. So anyway that's the uh, my opinion on how the stuff should be crimped and when looking at the different crimpers these are all tools I've used over the years this one the Klein is probably the best uh, it doesn't have a stripper on it but I use this anyway for a stripper for the most part uh, these all will work but I actually think this one's the best. A lot of it's because I can put the most power into it. But this whole thing is about, can I get a wire terminal on the end of these things that makes as good a contact as possible? Now, of course, if I wanted the absolute best contact, I'd solder the silly thing. But we're in a business where time is kind of money, so... Uh, you're probably not going to use uh, solder on most of these things. Uh, by the way, if you're using what's called high temperature wire because your wires are burned off on the end, you're kind of wasting your time because it's not the insulation that's the problem on it because the high temperature wire is just a high temperature insulation. It's got the same copper inside. The problem is on the terminals they're not making good connection now I've got ring terminals and all these uh, and I showed you the push-on terminal the push-on terminal just aren't as good plain and simple uh, that's what most of these things have so that's what you're going to be stuck with is push-on terminals but anyway that's my way of doing it you may have other ways that work just as well because I was doing so many electric furnaces, this is what I developed to make this work out as best I could get it to work out. Anyway, that's it on this one.